Okay, so I appreciate everybody's patience. Let's, let's clap it up. That took a while. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so there it is, right? There it is. That, that was a lot. All right, so uh, today's going to be the first episode of Investigating the Strange and Unusual, okay? And so we're going to be investigating strange and unusual phenomenon that surrounds our realm. All right. So uh, today is the first episode. We're going to be focusing on Bigfoot. Okay. Okay. So Bigfoot history sightings and geographic dispersal. So the phenomenon of Bigfoot, also referred to as Sasquatch, has been a subject of great intrigue within the realm of folklore anthropology and even zoology. This entity, which is primarily described as a large bipedal humanoid, has been the focal point of numerous anecdotal testimonies. But a comprehensive empirical validation remains elusive. Today, we will trace its historical origins, analyzing notable sightings, and discussing its whereabouts, or its supposed whereabouts. All right. The Bigfoot narrative can be attributed to the indigenous populations of North America. Several tribes have their own renditions of humanoid creatures. For instance, the Coast Salish people of British Columbia recount tales of Sasquatch. These narratives, albeit diverse in specifics, generally portray a creature that is anthropomorphic in nature, possessing a towering stature and covered in fur. Let's talk about some sightings here. One cannot dwell into the study of Bigfoot without referencing the 1967 film footage captured by Roger Patterson. That's the footage that you've just seen, okay? The last one where uh, it just showed the Bigfoot, but you're going to see that again here. Okay? It was, that was captured by Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin near Buff Creek, California. This particular evidence displays what appears to be a Bigfoot in mid-stride offering a brief glance toward the camera before retreating. Though this footage has been subjected to rigorous analysis, the base concerning mm. authenticity persists. Throughout the latter half of the 20th century and into the 21st, various eyewitnesses' accounts have been documented. Consistent attributes cited include height ranging from seven to nine feet, pronounced muscular build, elongated arms, and a gut that is distinctively non-human. Facial features are often described as a amalgamation of simian and human characteristics. Of course, simian is, is monkey ape, okay? All right, this is the original footage that, of course, you've seen a moment ago that people have studied over and over and over again right here, okay? Back to it here. So I want you all to see that again. What does that look like to you all? Does it look real to you? What does that look <laughs> <laughs> Well, what does that look like to you, Mr. Blair? Hey. Hey. Walking the straight up, you know, apes don't really walk like that. You know, they walk uh, more hunched over and on their knuckles at times. So, so walking straight up like that looks like an ape. That's how Bigfoot is depicted, kind of like that, kind of walking straight up though, like a human, and and really large. Okay, does that look like a human in a suit to you, or does that look like it could be some mythical creature? Give me an entity getting open up portal to this one too as well. Okay, okay. Miss Blair says it's like an entity maybe it's going to to, to and for a, a, a portal. Okay, what about you? <laughs> well, Reese is I want it to be. Oh, you want it to be. You, yeah. you want to believe, yes. all right? Okay, all right. What about you, Reese? What do you think? Um, it's like a, it's kind of like a it's Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay. Oh, 
looks more like a human with like fur on them. Sounds genetic disorder. Somebody found a. Okay. Okay. Well, let's continue on. Thank you. Now, of course, here in a moment, uh, I am going to ask you all who on Zoom what you all think. Uh, there is going to be a clearer picture once this is done today. Uh, I'm going to put a, I'm going to edit the video a little bit, and you're going to see a clear image of all of this on YouTube later. All right. So let's continue. So geographic dispersal. Reports of Bigfoot sightings are predominantly concentrated within the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. So think of Oregon, California, so on and so forth. Uh, however, testimonials extend across the entirety of North America, with some even suggesting a global dispersal pattern, referencing creatures such as the Yeti and the Himalayas. So Yeti, Sasquatch, Bigfoot are either all the same being or cousins, okay? All right, so additional observations. While the empirical validation of Bigfoot remains a subject of contention, certain phenomena associated with his sightings have been noted. These include auditory evidence. Some witnesses have reported eerie howls or screams suggesting a vocal communication mechanism, physical traces, Traces. On certain occasions, large footprints have been discovered in proximity to reported sightings, while some have been debunked as hoaxes. Others remain unexplained. Behavior patterns. Anecdotal accounts often ascribe a nocturnal behavioral pattern of Bigfoot, with many sightings occurring during dusk or dawn. There are other entities of concern. So supposedly this photo here is of a uh, dead Bigfoot that was preserved, okay? Other entities in various regions, while Bigfoot-like creatures are reported, other cryptids are also occasionally mentioned. For instance, in the Pacific Northwest, where Bigfoot sightings are prevalent, there are also tales of lake monsters akin to the Loch Ness Monster. UFOs and extraterrestrials, some fringe theories within the Bigfoot community suggest a potential link between Bigfoot sightings and unidentified flying objects or extraterrestrial activity. Proponents of this theory argue that areas with high Bigfoot activity sometimes overlap with regions reported to have frequent UFO sightings. It is important to note that this theory is highly speculative and not supported by the broader scientific Forest spirits or guardian entities, indigenous tales sometimes characterize Bigfoot or Sasquatch-like entities as spiritual beings or guardians of the forest. Within these narratives, it is suggested that there are other spiritual or supernatural entities in the forest that might coexist or interact with Bigfoot. Animals, some research believing Bigfoot to be yet undiscovered primate species theorize that these creatures would interact with animals in their ecosystem, much like other large mammals. This would include interactions with prey, predators, or competitors, but not necessarily unique entities that consistently accompany Bigfoot. In stunning the internet, it claims to show Bigfoot in the depths of the Mississippi woods. And I have to tell you this, as an Oregonian, I believe this is real. I believe we finally have the evidence that we've been waiting for. If you talk to anyone who has seen Sasquatch, this is what they're looking at. Babe. So, so, in, uh -huh. so, so yeah. is Sasquatch in Alabama uh, related to Sasquatch in Oregon? Yes. Are they are they, chimpanzees? Well, I'm just asking. No, no. Do they, they, they chimpanzees? Do they travel in Idaho? Do they have children? Do they it's a species. We need a close up on this. I mean, I think that's Jimmy Fallon scouting it. Okay. So, so for the first episode today, we went over Bigfoot. Okay. Each episode, we're going to go over a very specific entity or place, phenomenon, whatever. It's not just on entities, but it could be on haunted houses. It could be on haunted places that are supposedly legitimate, not uh, portals, 
So each episode, we're going to go over something very specific. This episode, figure we do Bigfoot first. Okay, so now I want to hear from you all, right? Uh, also, you all on Zoom. Do you think this entity is from a interesting imagination? Okay, somebody's thought forms? Or do you think it's real in some form? It may not be exactly what we're seeing here, but do you think it's real or someone's imagination? Um, I actually was thinking about that. And you know how when you find children in the woods and they've been living there forever and they they start acting like the different creatures that are out there? So I think maybe something like that may have happened okay. to someone. That, and when you get those children back, they have like all this long hair and they have like those kind of attributes. So. I don't know, maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> what about you, Blairs? As Dr. Blair says, the unseen controls the scene. So as we're going through the year 2023 and upward, the unseen forces is making itself known. So whomsoever need to see, they'll see. And with your sermon spirit, you know if that's part of the uh, galactic family your ancestors or whatever. Never may be. Okay. Uh wanna to add to that? Yeah, I would just say they were creatures that were about and and uh considered creatures that that lived on there but not for long mm -hmm. because we don't see them anymore. We don't see just seeing scenes of them they were, but we don't see no more unless someone knocked them off. So what you're saying, okay, but I get what you're saying is that maybe these are creatures that maybe are from the old world, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe, you know, when, it, you know, other creatures and things have been wiped out already, these are the last few kind of remaining yeah. from an older time yeah. that we no longer see anymore. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's interesting, right? What about you, Reese? It's pretty real to me. Okay. Okay. So you think, uh, like when we up there to Oregon on our last trip, you're saying that this entity or something similar to it could be roaming in those forests that we were around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you all think? Okay. You can unmute your mic. Tell me what you think, you all. Uh, if you were able, I'll try to make it so that you can see it. I'm going to adjust this for the next episode so it's really spot on, so, you, so it really focuses on this. But nevertheless, uh, what do you all think? We can hear you if you open your mic. I would say, um, yeah, I believe that it could be possible because in Mississippi, I have cousins that's like seven feet tall and they real, real big. And so I maybe if they was living in the woods and they wasn't shaving, on a regular basis, like a, a regular person would, that they could become extra hairy. And to somebody, you know, that's just wandering or passing through, it could scare a mess out of them because they're real, real tall and they got all this hair on them and they're guardians of the woods. So I think that is possible. And also, you know, in places like India, you have people that um, have that so-called disease where they get real hairy. So I think with different mixtures and uh, of our people that we've been doing, and you know, that it, it's definitely possible. Yes, okay. so I would say that. Uh, anyone else? Cassandra, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I would add that there are plenty of plethora of books out there um, with people like families, actually, that look exactly like that. So I don't know if that's just like um, someone mentioned, like maybe a remnant from the old world that are still scattered throughout. Um, but it's definitely real. I don't think it's more like... Um, like scary or anything like that, but more so from the point of, I mean, it, there's, like I said, there's plenty of books. I've screenshot plenty of um, pictures and images of like back in the 1400s and things like that. And they look exactly like that. But these people are depicted like they're raising their family, you know, got the mother and the father and everybody's all hairy and everything, even the children. Okay, thank you for sharing, Cassandra. Uh, anyone 
thinking it could also be like a scientific experiment way back in. Oh, great day, great day. Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, right. Um, so I want to add to that. Um, I, I, I definitely think uh that it was the space and time those those entities existed. Um, and I kind of would correspond to like how everybody's saying the remnants of the old world. Also, um, even now, like you know, we still have uh you know, Harry Beans and uh, other entities of, of that as around. So I definitely think that it's, it's definitely a possibility that uh, they, they was here. Now, if they're still here, I, I, I'm not sure. Because like how you, how you ask uh, Maurice, like far as and seeing them in today's time in the, in the woods, um, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think we'll see them today, today's time in today's time, but I do think that they had a, a time and space that they did it um wrong the uh, the earth. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate the share, Antoine. Hey Tony, that, that first picture is that a is that a real picture the, the first one? Uh, that, the screen right on slide now. two. Okay. I don't think so. I came across this and it looked like an, it looked like an AI figure, but, but I'm not sure the store that it was coming from this is real, but I kind of doubt it. But. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I kind of feel the same way as everybody else said. I think they pretty much hit it on the head. Like, I, I think, you know, it, as as it pertains to just the vastness of, of this world when when you look at like the oceans and the the forest there's so much that's been unexplored so i could definitely see how you know if they were civilizations that uh or just you know tribes or, or, or whatever just out there that never actually had contact with the the civilized world how they can just keep evolving like that you know so um i definitely believe it's probably they're probably out there okay appreciate that will Oh, can I make one, one more point too? Um, it also makes me just think about just like, you know, how many, like you said how we were in Oregon, um, how many animals are out there, you know what I'm saying? Like I've never actually seen a bear in person, but I know that, you know, you, you go out to the, the woods of Georgia, like they're out there, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, maybe they they might see us or they, they kind of know we're in these spaces and they just, you know, don't come around. That's a good point. Wouldn't, wouldn't you avoid humans if you were a supposedly Bigfoot? A lot of a lot of these so-called animals around us are actually very intelligent. We know cats are intelligent, dogs are intelligent. Uh, people belittle these entities, but we know that this is a different type of intelligence. It's maybe not our exact intelligence, right? Dolphins are intelligent, so on and so forth. So maybe this is a old world, very intelligent being that's intelligent enough to know to stay the heck away from humans, okay, or at least certain types of humans, okay, uh, because there are uh, in uh, myth uh, of different tribes and peoples of them having uh, pleasant communications with these entities with no issue at all, because they do trade with each other and everything else, okay, so maybe uh, it's certain types of humans or maybe just the spirit of, of humanity has changed in a way that makes it so that they don't they want to stay the heck away from wherever the people are at. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Uh, I was gonna say similar to what you were just saying. Uh, animals have become more and more afraid of us because mm -hmm. of the, you know, uh, I guess the effect of colonial tactics and how that's mm -hmm. affected our behavior. You know, animals adapt to it. You know, depending on how ostracized you want to do. Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I saw something strange well, a couple of years ago, a small town uh, called Canton, Illinois. And it was getting towards dusk. And uh, uh, it's a small town, but there's still a lot of people going on. And two deer 
walking shoulder to shoulder down the middle of the street, completely oblivious to traffic, you know. And I had never seen that before. I thought that was very unique. Uh, it's like in the forest or whatever. You know? uh, but also, I, like I said, I live in the country. So it's it's not uh, weird to see deer come out of the cornfields or whatever. To walk on the highway completely oblivious to any cars that might be coming. It's like, you know, like, oh, well. And I had a sad occasion a month or so ago uh, to hit a deer. And uh, which I think are very beautiful animals, you know, of course. And when I hit him, I hit the rear behind. And he looked into the, uh, he looked into the window, you know, the front pass and right in front of the driver's side, and he hit the back of him. And uh, it was like, he was so sad, sad looking, like a human, you know, human expression. And uh, then, you know, you know, the situation's over, you know, I drove on. But, uh, you know, in the country here, you see animals uh, that aren't uh, really afraid to, to be around people too much. Uh, whereas in the in the in the, in the closest to the cities, uh, you know that that's not the case, you know. So yeah, and, and just to make a point of that, that one, one picture of the Bigfoot walking, historically, um, I got a feeling in my gut that uh, that was just a natural being walking. It didn't seem uh, that is uh, it didn't seem artificial. It just seemed like a a natural being just walking at its feet. Yeah, that one. And uh, it's just like, like a calm man walking in the park. You know? Just casually look around and see anybody behind him. That, that's the feeling I got. So, you know, you know whether it's uh, some kind of creature or whatever, but it's just a, human, a humanoid being that, uh, uh, you know, just keeps itself uh, hidden from uh, the public, because maybe it knows, as as what was stated already, uh, that uh, uh, having clashes with uh, humans uh, is, you know, is not a good thing, you know, or the uh, disaster for both. So, all right, I, I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, uh, David. Tony, I know not uh, if you've seen in the news that uh, I know this sharks, works they're attacking people now, especially in the water. Yeah, it's increasing. Mm -hmm. If they don't report, it's increasing more. Mm -hmm. I have seen that. Uh, dolphins as well. Yeah, attacking yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are uh, doing the most, as they said. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so or a certain type of person. Okay, uh, is, 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 is doing the most. Yeah. So, um, so anything else for anybody? Uh, Zoom people, uh, Zoom yeah, I got, I want to, um, I guess, ask a question, Tony. Uh, yeah, so you know, earlier this year, you did like the uh, the numerology, um, just kind of like your days to like look out for, um, it being like a seven year and everything, um. And then, you know, like the whole thing in like Israel popped off on October 7th. And then I, I remember your last video that you put out or last couple of videos, you were talking about how like the there's kind of like a shift in consciousness um, that you've kind of been observing. I, I wonder, could you maybe just like expand on that? Yeah, 